So the Samsung Galaxy A55 is Samsung's latest mid-range smartphone. Its launch price in the UK was around £440, while the Samsung Galaxy flagship, the S24, is nearly double the price. But just because it's twice as much, does that make the S24 twice as good? Or is the smart money better spent on the Samsung Galaxy A55? Well, it all depends on several factors, some of which you should definitely think about, and some of which maybe you couldn't care less about. So I know what you want. You want answers. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! And the truth is what you'll get here. And there is a couple of very important differences that if you don't know about before spending your money could end up being a very costly mistake for you. But first, let's run through the essential stuff that everybody needs to know before buying a new phone. Like, what's in the box? The unboxing experience is not out of this world. It's pretty simple, really. It's the phone, a USB C to C cable and some paperwork, no charger. The optimal charging speeds for both devices is 25 watts. Ideally, you'd want a PD power delivery 3.0 charging brick. The official Samsung charging brick with the cable on samsung.com at the time of this video is currently priced around 20 pounds. And the first big difference between the two phones is the Samsung Galaxy S24 does support 15 watt Qi wireless charging and also reverse wireless charging at 4.5 watts. So you can put your Galaxy Buds or your watch on the back of the phone and charge it up. The A55 doesn't support wireless charging at all. But if you're the type of person who never uses it anyway, this won't be a deal breaker for you. When you compare these two galaxies side by side, the first thing you'll notice is the A55 does have thicker bezels all the way around and it's also a slightly larger phone. The screen to body ratio on the A55 is 86% and the screen to body ratio on the S24 is 90%. There's also a weight difference between the two phones. Naturally, the bigger phone weighs a bit more, 46 grams heavier to be precise. And the A55 has a slightly wider profile than the S24. On the back of the A55 is almost identical to the S24. So if looks is something you care about, you don't really have to pay more for that iconic Samsung Galaxy style because you do get it here on the A55 at half the price. And you'll be happy to know that the frame on the A55 is not plastic. It is in fact aluminium. The S24 is also aluminium, but a more robust variety of it. It is actually Armour Aluminium 2, which offers better drop and scratch resistance. So if you don't like to rock a case on your phone, this upgraded material could be important for you. But if you're the type of guy or girl who instantly throws on a protective case, well, then maybe like The Rock says, it doesn't matter what type of aluminium it is. And here's a big win for the Galaxy A55. The SIM tray allows for two 5G SIMs or one SIM and an SD card up to one terabyte. With the S24, the memory is what it is. And the price jumps between the memory sizes are more expensive than SD cards. And the advantage of having an SD card on the A55 is that you can transfer and backup data to the SD card, and then you can just put that SD card into your computer to transfer files across when needed. And while we're on the topic of file transfers, the USB-C ports on these devices may look exactly the same, but they're not. Because not all USB-C ports are created equal, the A55 actually uses a USB-C 2.0 port, and the S24 has the newer USB 3.2, and this is also a display port. And even though this upgraded USB-C port doesn't offer an advantage in charging speeds, the S24's data transfer speeds via the wire will be significantly faster. And it also unlocks a very powerful feature, which I'll come back to later on in the video. Trust me, you're gonna to wanna to see this. Now let's talk about Samsung's display. Samsung is the best in the business when it comes to phone screens. They even make the displays for the iPhone. So as you would expect, both are top notch here. However, there are some differences. Of course, the screen size 6.6 .6 inch on the A55 and 6.2 inch on the standard Galaxy S24. Of course, there is the Plus model as well, which is a bigger display closer to the A55. But between these two, the screen resolutions are the same, which naturally makes the S24's panel a little bit more pixel dense because it is smaller. But side by side, the detail difference really isn't that noticeable. Both support 120 Hertz refresh rate and both have a HDR 10 plus rating. And in regular lighting conditions, it's hard to see a difference, but there are three important things you need to know about the Galaxy S24 screen. First of all, it's an LTPO AMOLED, meaning it can control and adjust the refresh rate down to one Hertz when needed which makes it more power efficient. It's also considerably brighter. The A55 tops out at 1000 nits, which is very respectable, but the peak brightness on the S24 is 2600 nits, which is bright enough to give you a suntan. 
Hold on. There's something different. And the third difference is the glass on top of the display. Both have very premium Gorilla Glass from Corning with the A55 using Victus Plus and the S24 using a slightly newer Victus 2. The difference is not massive and actually completely irrelevant if you plan to put a screen protector on it. But at least now you know, the S24 glass is ever so slightly more robust. But to me, this really isn't the feature that you'd wanna spend all that extra money for. You'll see what that is in a moment. Both phones use in-display biometric fingerprint scanners and they're very quick, but there is a difference in the technology used. The A55 uses the classic optical fingerprint method that shines a light up through the screen to scan your fingerprint. However, the S24 uses Qualcomm's ultrasonic scanner, which uses vibrations to read your fingerprint. It's more advanced, arguably more secure, and it's slightly quicker. Okay, everyone loves a good photo and especially a good photo of themselves. And Samsung knows this, and that's why they've upgraded the sensor on the A55 selfie camera. It uses a 32 megapixel sensor with an aperture of f2.2 and a wide angled lens. And the S24 uses a 12 megapixel sensor with f2.2 aperture. Now having more megapixels doesn't necessarily mean better results every time. So I'll let you judge for yourself. And if I could have avoided putting my ugly mug in this video, I would have done. So I will apologize for that now. Anyway, both selfie cameras are also capable of 4K video up to 60 frames per second. So that's pretty impressive. The rear cameras look the same on the surface, but are actually very different. Although the primary camera is actually identical, they both use the same 50 megapixel sensor, f1.8 aperture, 24 millimeter lens equivalent, and both support optical image stabilization. The ultra wides, both are 12 megapixels, but they're different sensors, and they also have different optics. The A55 actually has a slightly wider field of view in comparison to the S24. The third camera is the biggest difference between the two. The S24 has a 10 megapixel telephoto camera and the A55 in its place has the opposite of that. It's a five megapixel macro camera. So this is definitely something to consider. Do you prefer better close up photography or do you prioritize taking photos from further away? Let me see. The Galaxy A55's video quality tops out at 4K 30 frames per second, whereas the S24 maxes out at 8K 30 frames per second, and it does support HDR 10 plus. And I am working on a camera comparison between these two, so keep an eye out for that one. Now let's talk about the power and speed. The A55 has an impressive 5,000 milliamp hour battery compared to the S24's 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Charge speeds are similar, but because the A55 has that larger battery, it will take a tiny bit longer to reach 100%. The bigger battery isn't necessarily an instant win for the A55 because there are other things that can affect battery. And I'll show you how it compares in a benchmark test versus the S24 in a moment. But now the two very important things that I alluded to in the intro of this video that you absolutely need to factor into your decision before buying either one of these. Number one, it is the chipset. The efficiency of the chipset can dramatically impact the battery life and of course performance and even the camera quality. And when I bought the Galaxy S24, I made a mistake. I must have thought this was America. I thought this was America! Huh? Isn't this America? I'm sorry, I thought this was America! Because I was expecting the Qualcomm Snapdragon flagship, the 8 Gen 3 in the Galaxy S24. They call that chip the Titan of AI. And if you're in America, that is what you'll get. It is arguably the most powerful Android chip on the market today. However, in the UK, the S24 models, except for the Ultra, have Samsung's own version of this. It's called the Exynos 
2400 and it's still powerful, but it's just a little bit behind the performance of the Snapdragon version. So keep that in mind. The A55 in comparison also has Samsung's own Exynos chip, but it's a different one. It's the 1480. And even though it's a four nanometer chip, just like the 2400 and just like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, it's definitely not as powerful. And you can see the difference here in the performance between the two Exynos chips and also the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip in my Galaxy S24 Ultra. And you can also see here how the battery holds up under sustained heavy gaming simulation. And now there are various RAM and ROM options on the two devices, but it is the ROM that you wanna keep an eye on because the S24 uses a faster version of UFS on the 256 gigabyte model and up, which means faster read and write speeds, which ultimately means quicker loading times. And honestly, we're not talking about days or hours. In most cases, we're talking about fractions of a second when it comes to like social media apps. And for heavier gaming titles, it could be a few seconds. So if you're not a gamer and you don't really use graphically demanding apps, you could save a lot of money in exchange for a few fractions of a second if you go with the A55. It is a very good daily driver for anybody who just does a bit of internet, social media, photos, maybe a bit of YouTube, and it's pretty good in all areas. But here's that second big factor that you need to think about, and it is Samsung Galaxy AI. The S24 has it, and the A55 doesn't. So with Galaxy AI, you get all of the advanced intelligence features built straight into the Samsung keyboard, and it's incredibly useful for checking your spelling or even rewriting things more concisely, or even tailored for social media and things like that. It really is incredibly useful. Also the ability to summarize web pages and things like that is incredibly useful and it's only gonna get better. And this is definitely one of the things that you pay extra money for. And I do believe for some of you, it will be worth spending the extra money. And if you care about speed and power and take comfort in knowing you have this year's cutting edge tech and the frames and the games you play are important to you and you like to run the graphics at the higher settings, well then the S24 is the faster and more powerful device that you'd be looking for. And if you're in America, I thought this was America. You can just buy the one that's available to you. But if you're here in the UK and you want the best of the best in the Galaxy S24 form factor, then you might be better off importing one from America. It does have the better chip, but if you don't care about having the best of the best, but you do want the AI stuff, the regular one here in the UK with the Exynos chip is still better than most phones out there today. And a couple more things that make the S24 a little bit more special than the A55 is it does support Wi-Fi 6E connectivity. And remember that USB-C 3.2 port that I mentioned? Well, this port allows you to turn the S24 into a desktop computer with Samsung DeX. Now, if you don't know what Samsung DeX is, then you should probably check out this thumbnail that's on screen right now. Appreciate you guys for watching this one. See you in the next one. Don't be late. I thought this was America.